And now a question to Sebastian. Now, yeah, very concrete question. How do you see what, how can spatial planning contribute to adaptation mitigation of climate change? And what are the best preconditions in this respect? So very direct questions about spatial planning and climate change. Yeah. Okay, and, and very comprehensive. Well, um, I'm thinking of three um, directions uh, of how spatial planning uh, contributes. Uh, one is um, that spatial planning helps uh, increasing integrated and sectoral adaptation capacities. It supports risk prevention and disaster risk management and um, mainly by, by securing land or facilitating multifunctional land use and, and most likely by promoting nature-based solutions. And concrete examples uh, for that are fresh air corridors or storage areas for heavy rainfalls management, <clears throat> but also, of course, uh, conventional dikes. And another direction is that um, spatial planning has an important coordinating function for adaptation to climate risks. Um, here I mean, um, for instance, participatory approaches, uh, governance mechanisms and, and procedures. And I think it is very important to use experience from spatial planning since climate adaptation and resilient development consists of a lot of cross cutting issues which should be coordinated properly. This is also something we already heard from from uh, Valdor and Heike today um, in the former session, in the previous session. And um, moreover, spatial planning can create positive images of the future despite of, of global warming and its risks. And uh, we should also talk about opportunities such as a new quality of life. This is already mentioned in the WASAP uh, long-term perspective and, and also the, the transformative power of cities like, like in the sponge city concept. And um, let me say one, one last sentence uh, right now. From, from these points of view, I see more potential to enrich the WASAP new vision and mainstream climate adaptation issues in a more explicit way. Okay, thank you. Maybe thank you. We can maybe we can go into more details a little bit later. Uh -huh. Okay, so if time will allow, yeah. Thank you so much for these very precise proposals as well as um, this general a general proposal how to deal with, within uh, was a long term perspective with climate issue and uh, before uh, going to uh, asking a question to the next uh, uh, speaker i i there, i see that there is a chat uh, the a question to edwards what is uh, so it uh, what is the term or due date for this Estonian Latvian uh, uh, offshore wind park. So, Edwards, maybe you can give the answer just right now. Uh, sorry, I, I, I didn't see that uh, in the chat. Uh, well, uh, sorry, but uh, I, I can reply in private, okay, to Elena regarding uh, the, the date. I'll find her, no worries. Uh-huh. Elena Gipsle. Yeah, not uh, Elena Wedemann. So, yes. yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, and now I would like to ask again a question to Matti. Uh, how you, ha you have long experience working with the regional development and spatial planning, and what are you, your thoughts? How can Baltic Sea region increase their resilience to climate change? Well, uh, here I, I think that this uh, resilience is um, a, a key word for the whole concept of regional development. So uh, climate change, uh, of course, especially, but also the development uh, matters in, in general terms. And um, 
Uh, as Tampere region, as city of Tampere, has go, gone through uh, difficult times during the last decade. So first, the uh, collapse of this traditional red brick industry in seven, uh, 80, uh, let's say 60s and 70s. And then uh, some decades later, so a uh, collapse of the Nokia ecosystem some 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And still, as, as we today are, uh, are doing quite well and going strong. So I think the key word here is is the, uh, uh, resilience. So if we think the um, story of the uh, temporary region's uh, future, so we know that uh, world is changing and regions must be in change and um, uh, the future is full of unknown, more, more, than, more than ever, I, I would say. And here the answer, how to survive, is uh, resilience. So I think that first it's, it's long-term uh, development work. Secondly, it's, it's ecosystems, meaning uh, doing together. And, and then uh, thirdly, so it's sustainab uh, sustainability in, in, in its all uh, uh, meanings. So it's navigating through changes and, and, and coming out from uh, stronger from these, uh, from these changes. And I find that uh, resilience, so that means it's diversity. It is, um, as we tend to say in Finland, so uh, not placing all the eggs in the same basket, but having multiple baskets with uh, some eggs in those. And, um, and it's um, situation awareness and it's clever uh, future uh, foresight. So then on the other hand, so how regions uh, could then uh, develop their re uh, resilience. So uh, you all know the, the slogan that um, think globally and act locally. And in this context, you might might say that think macro regionally and act regionally. And the Baltic, re uh, Baltic Sea region indirect has been uh, mentioned during uh, this workshop every every now and then. And I would like to highlight and and a bit even market this tool. Uh, as many of you know that I have also a dark background related to the uh, Baltic Sea region indirect, even from the uh, late 90s when working in the uh, Rostock Secretariat and, and today representing uh, Finnish regions in the uh, uh, program uh, Moni monitoring committee. So uh, being dealing with five generations of Baltic Sea region indirect. So I, I, I really think that the current, the new program that just has started is, is the best one. So it's kind of a niche program for the Baltic Sea region, concentrating on, on those challenges and those aspects where the uh, doing together and cooperation in the just, especially in Baltic Sea region is important and, and relevant in order to solve these, uh, solve these uh, challenges. And there are priorities uh, for innovative societies, including uh, objective uh, resilient economies and, and communities. And um, also on, on, on other priority related to uh, climate uh, neutral uh, societies. So we have there uh, one of those toolboxes, doing things together and developing uh, the uh, uh, resilience of, of the regions, also from the uh, climate adaptation point of view. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Matti. And there is a question uh, in the chat uh, to you uh, that, okay, resilience uh, from Luke uh, Bolands, if I spell it correctly, is a surname. But what kind of resilience you mean? Engineering resilience, ecologic resilience, or co-evolutionary resilience? So, <laughs> well, very difficult words that I maybe not understand even all of all of them. But uh, in a way, I I see it from the uh, of, uh, from the comprehensive regional development uh, uh, point of point of view. So um, both ecological, uh, ecological, ecological, economical, and and social point of view at least. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, there is also a question about Vasa long term perspective. Will the coastal area be of specific interest for WASAB yes, the, with regard to risks from the sea level rise? Yeah, maybe Elena, you can give direct answer or uh, 
uh, there, I suppose that Jens has a kind of answer already here. Yeah, but Elena, please. Okay, if Jens is not coming, then uh, yeah, what I can say that I think that the coastal areas as uh, like a specific actions for coastal areas are not uh, uh, yet uh, in, in, in a draft uh, draft vision, but I think this is a very good uh, proposal that we could uh, take up from this uh, workshop uh, to consider further. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Maybe Jens uh, would like uh, to supplement a bit. Yes, actually, I think it would link up with what Sebastian offered, or actually also suggested that we that that, that we go into detail and and, and look at what what concrete uh, improvements could be could be done to the to to the to the LTP to the LTP draft. And this is something that then the, the coastal areas is one thing that we, that could, should be discussed. And I'm sure that Sebastian also has some ideas with his background in planning. Um, but yeah, but but also of course also the other other panelists would be curious about hearing more about that yeah yeah okay thank you so much for for these replies and now i would uh, like uh, to ask uh, to all panelists uh, the question uh, what uh, because uh, esponit uh, deals with data and um, evidence based uh, uh, based information. So, what kind of data and or uh, research gaps uh, do you see are crucial for for uh, in relation to 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 our region and uh, also to related to climate change issues? So, who would like to give start the first one from our panelists? What are these data needs and uh, uh, studies needed? What would be helpful for your work? Are there any? Yes, Mati, please. Okay, okay, maybe may, may I could say something. So, uh, so when preparing myself to this uh, workshop and, and when uh, now listening to the um, pre presentations, I was uh, once again positively surprised and astonished ab about the quantity of the quality of the data and, and surveys and information that uh, ESPON is pro producing. So I think it's more challenging for us at the regions uh, being aware and, and using and taking every good out of this uh, out of this material. So my uh, only wishes to Espon now are uh, just that. May the force be with you. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe Sebastian can, uh, can add something as well. Um, well, yes, um, I, I was, um, or I am uh, very glad to, to hear today that uh, the data from the Espon Climate Project will be integrated soon into uh, the, the whole monitoring uh, framework of Aspen since I guess this was a, a big gap and also um, I think it will be a, a great support for for different level actors or different sector actors uh, within um, the, the whole Europe but uh, especially also for the Baltic Sea uh, region <clears throat> so this was a very good news <laughs> Good news today, and I'm thinking of probably other gaps or, or something that is directly linked to that data is that I see a, a necessity to um, enable actors to work with that kind of data. I guess we we heard something about that in, in the uh, from the cascade project 80 presented and the experience um, in germany for instance is that especially um, municipalities in rural areas really have difficulties to to apply tools and instruments due to um, lacks of of personnel in the communities sometimes also due to a lack of competences because uh, the adaptation is still a quite new field of action for them. 
and therefore I really encourage to to look for yeah um, <clears throat> to look for <clears throat> for new projects perhaps in the sense of of interact where you connect people the the users of the data or the potential users of the data with the data uh, that is offered. Thank you so much. And now I would like ask Ed to uh, Edwards, uh, Daniels, uh, what uh, would be your interest from your policy area, uh, energy side? Do you have any ideas what would be very useful for in your field, uh, how ESPON uh, uh, studies could help you? Uh, well, uh, uh, I think that the energy security topic uh, is uh, pretty uh, broad, but uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, hard for me to link uh, how spatial planning and uh, the security uh, could interlink interlink and uh, what would be the the, the topics that uh, we want uh, we we would uh, find valuable to be be explored there but uh, as as previously mentioned uh, we are all about the the grids uh, all about exploring how the existing pipelines can be used for uh, alternative uh, uh, alternative fuel sources and uh, uh, seeing uh, where will the uh, growth uh, of uh, of the of the people and industries will uh, uh, go up to already uh, plan and accumulate extra power needed uh, to to supply the energy in the future in those areas thank you i suppose that uh, people dealing uh, uh, in espon agtc and also espon monitoring committee members with, uh, who participate in today's workshop could uh, also um uh, take in uh, into account those proposals which were expressed by you and as we know that there is in the final development a new espen program uh, for the coming years and uh, uh, how what do you think how espen program could support uh, these uh, data uh, needs and data gaps and you already expressed your point of view but but anyway so maybe yeah how it, if you can give these answers how exactly espen program uh, what kind of uh, thematic areas or um, or other things could support this uh, baltic sea region climate related research needs. Do you have uh, any ideas at the moment? How do you, what, how ESPAN program could be developed at its final, of course it's in final stage now with the new program, but still there will be a room like for stakeholders involvement, etc. So yeah. I suppose that Sebastian, yes, you would like to say some words. Yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> honestly, I'm I'm not into the details of of Aspen over the last years. Um, but what we uh, learned today from from the the presentation was that it, it's, a, it's a huge uh, data pool. So mm -hmm. um, I would um, <clears throat> maybe ask a question on, on that or, or recommend in a way to really uh, um, pay attention and use money for maintain that data pool because I think it, it becomes bigger and bigger and therefore uh, um, updates of, of data and uh, are, are very necessary and there are probably um, yeah kinds of data that have to be updated in, in short terms so to guarantee that the data can be used and is is, is updated seems uh, important for me mm -hmm. thank you and Matti and Edwards do you have any additional ideas regarding ESPON program well, I'm afraid I have nothing to add what I what I just said. So. Uh -huh. 
Okay. It challenge, uh, challenge, challenge is more than on our side. Uh -huh. Okay. And Edwards, do you have anything else to add? Uh, well, I would uh, just like to wish you best of luck, uh, luck of implementing the program and following the setup uh, timeline. Yeah, OK, thank you. And uh, from my side, uh, what I catched um, during this uh, discussion is that actually uh, there is one important issue which was actually already um, um, highlighted by ESPON years ago that this outreach of ESPON uh, projects uh, ESPON results should be should be strengthened that uh, people in on uh, working on different levels they they would be informed and they would be interested to use these results which are really um, all these databases and and also projects there are so many that they could uh, take out the the things which are needed for for their uh, fields and and so on and also what is uh, very important I, I agree is that about ma maintenance of data and regular update of the data that they can be used for just uh, justifying different uh, new uh, existing policies and and uh, promoting uh, uh, new policies and then finally i suppose that we elena got already ideas how what uh, uh, a new wasab uh, vision should uh, 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 focus particularly but uh, maybe still our uh, uh, panelists have additional thoughts how uh, this was a long term perspective could be could be strengthened and that it would be accepted by different type of stakeholders. Do you have any additional ideas? Yes, I would uh, like something to, to add. Sorry, yeah. Mati. Um, um, <clears throat> I think um, a clearer mainstreaming of adaptation issues should be reached. Um, the, the mitigation and also green economy, things like that, uh, are well addressed um, in, in the proposal I, I read. And I recommend to add adaptation issues to, to the topics. For instance, also with a view on the discussion in the chat, um, referring to the strings of the vision, um, there should be said something about a climate resilient coastal and transportation infrastructure as part of the or re you're referring to the pearls uh, blue green urban infrastructure like the sponge city concept for water management and for heat prevention and this is especially important for for increasing cities and metropolitan areas what we learned uh, with the data presented in the first or second session today um, and also, I thought also of the of that approach from the EU climate change adaptation strategy to look for nature based solutions mm -hmm. and to tackle climate impacts. This should also be should also be stressed, for instance, also in, in the fields of agriculture, forestry, tourism, and to try to to link it to um, biodiversity. In a way. So maybe it, it refers to to the patterns. Um, yeah, also so far mm -hmm. some, some concrete ideas of, of, of mine. And yeah, I, I wish you good luck for the for the new vision also to enrich it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And now Mat I see Mati wants to say something. Yes, yes, uh, thank you. It was really nice to see this. Uh, a historical overview of the development of the WhatsApp vision. And I remember in the early Stone Age, in the middle of 90s, so when I was just graduated and started my work as a planner, so WhatsApp vision was then something brand new and, and something different and something, something I would say, headbanging. And um, I dare to say that I was one of the first Finnish planners who then brought this idea to the everyday work and, and in the late 90s, so the uh, spatial plan 
of Hame region where I worked then was based on this idea. So there were pearls and there were strings and there were patches. And even the uh, color scheme of the map was somehow following these uh, uh, Vasab maps then. But maybe then, uh, year by year, so uh, the Vasab was still there and the vision was still relevant, but somehow it disappeared from the horizon of the regions. So in a, in a way, from our point of view, it was more the cooperation between the governments and, and, and ministries. And now when, they, they, when there's an update of the vision, and we have also got it for the consultations, so um, I could think that this might be then a renaissance of the Vasa vision, also from the region's point of view. So Tampere region will for sure give a comment by July. Okay, thank you so much. And now, um, uh, Edward, Daniel, would you like to add something more? Uh, unfortunately, I have no more uh, things to add. Yeah. OK, thank you anyway for your contribution during that session. So it was really, I suppose, that inspiring for everybody, uh, everybody who participated uh, today and um, inspiring how to deal with climate issues in various fields we all are working uh, now. And also there are uh, ideas how to act and do with that uh, in at various various uh, governance levels and now i would like again thank you all panelists also elena for presentation and all the um all the questions which were uh, these uh, people which asked questions and all the auditorium for participation and uh, patience to to still to be able to participate in this uh, during this afternoon 